Oh. February 5th, 2018. February 5th, 2018, Sunday morning. Oh. <coughs> Suffering with the flu. The flu epidemic in New York City. Ah. My name is Marcus Conti. I am a former sanitation enforcement agent for the city of New York. I am the sole plaintiff in Conti vs. DSNY. Index number 101058-2016. Currently being heard at 27 Madison Avenue, 1st Appellate Division. Okay. <coughs> Ooh. Deep cough. Luckily you can't catch it on that side of the camera. <laughs> but anyway, um, it's been an interesting... Um, I just wanted to check in, proof of life. The uh, talk about the Pfizer the Pfizer um, warrants, very very powerful um, finding. That was to to me. That's I mean when when we had Watergate, you know, back in the seventies, Watergate was where the Republican Party under Nixon bugged the opposition party, <coughs> right? They <coughs> it's going to be tough. They bugged the opposition party, right? In this case, the Clintons paid off FISA judges and FBI agents and DOJ agents all the way to the top under the, you know, clearly under the guidance of the then President Obama. I mean, it's just that that memo and the, the words of Andrew McCabe, the, the f former the now disgraced uh, deputy director of the FBI makes it clear that they abused the they abused the FISA court. FISA court's a secret court, right? It's used to protect Americans from foreign, you know, issues, foreign attacks and such, right? Get warrants, and they used that court. They drove a fake PP story about Trump and hookers, and a Yahoo News article. To, to get some, you know, to get wiretapping warrants on Trump and his team. And no one goes to jail. No one, there's no indictments, right? So now the Democratic Party straight out, straight out stabs Bernie in the back, Bernie Sanders, right? 2016 election. Outright, uh, the, the biggest election fraud in the history of America. Then they go on to, to rig it against Trump. Right? Using the FBI and the DOJ. I tell you, boy. I tell you, the Clintons. I tell you, boy. So anyway, I, I, I'm, at least I'm happy. I, I mean, I'm happy that it's out there. I think True Pundit has been doing, you know, Thomas Paine's been doing an excellent job. Keeping the news alive, H. A. Goodman, uh, Sticks, Hex, and Hammer, those guys, keeping the story alive. Keep talking about it, George Webb, right? In terms of DSNY, Conti vs. DSNY, we're still on. You know, we're on for March, and um, it looks like it might be a summary judgment. I have not seen anything that suggests that. There will be oral arguments, and again, I, you know, petition to the legal minds in the uh, audience. You know, does what does that mean if they're not, if the judges are not interested in hearing the story? Is it you can interpret it two ways? Have they heard it all already? Or um, you know, because I pitched heavily these these videos in the in the thing. Anyway, I'm gonna keep it brief because I'm not feeling so well, but. I'm I'm in good spirits. All's well. I hope everybody's doing well. And uh, you know we're we're two and a half years burning down the road. And uh, that case is going to come up in March at the appellate division. Those judges are going to have to take a look at it. We'll probably get a probably get a response. I don't know. Maybe two months later or so, March. April, May. We're looking at like a spring, spring decision. 
I want to talk about something. I just want to uh, seed a new idea that um, I, I may be diving into, which is... Hi, birds. Someone feeds the birds. What's up, guys? Pigeons. I wanted to seed a new idea, which is... Um, my funda fundamental belief is that um, I owe a student loan, right? <laughs> I'm 50, 53 years old, right? And uh, I still have an outstanding student loan, as do many Americans, right? I'm not ashamed of it, right? <clears throat> the principal has tripled and quadrupled and all this stuff, right? And it's my, and I've also gone bankrupt <coughs> in life. So it's my fundamental belief that Placing student loans uh, in, a, in a category where there's no bankruptcy protection is clearly unconstitutional, and I think that we could we could fight that all the way to the Supreme Court. Right? Not that not that the student loan itself is unconstitutional, <clears throat> but the fact that you're lumping the student loan in with things like child support or when you kill somebody in a car accident. You know, or punitive measures. Why is student loans in in that category? That doesn't make sense. See, the, the Constitution guaranteed bankruptcy, or it didn't guarantee it, but it encouraged it. It talked about it in the amendments, and it said that there needs to be a uniform, quote, uniform uh, system of bankruptcy across the country. That's not uniform, right? It's not uniform when students, young people, are trying to get an education and an 18-year-old ends up in a, in a local bank and signs, signs his name on something. And for the next 40 years of his life, they chase him around, right? And there's no, there's no recourse. There's no, way, there's no way to exonerate yourself from that. The bankruptcy, so I think there's an argument to be made there. Um, I think that there is a constitutional violation there when someone does, in fact, claim bankruptcy. So that's something I might be, um, it, it's something that, that is is worth a fight. And I think it's, it, 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 there's millions of people who are in that situation, millions of Americans who, who have been, uh, are, 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 you know, getting crushed by student loans and uh, have, you know, tried to get out of it through bankruptcy and can't. So anyway, that's it for now. I'm going to go back inside where it's warm. Peace.